All right, House of Pain fans, time to talk about the mid-season finale, season 11, episode 10. It was all a dream. Sorry, Calvin, but this was reality. Now, I thought this was a pretty good episode. Very good episode. And there's only about maybe one or two small things I felt kind of held it back from being a perfect score, but... I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. I thought this was a very well done episode from start to finish. And sources say that Lance, a.k.a. Calvin himself, wrote this episode. And if that's fact, there's obviously a trend going on here where every time Lance has the writer's pen to, you know, write the episode, he brings Calvin back to the days of being a dog, you know, being a player. And, <laughs> man... This truly felt like an original House of Pain episode. It really did. So, uh, without further ado, uh, I really am just going to talk about the two storylines. Obviously, there's the Malik storyline and there's the Calvin storyline. And no Curtis or Ella in this episode, which, correct me if I'm wrong, because look, I could be 100% wrong. But since the show came back on the air, especially last season, we know Curtis was gone for a lot of episodes. But... Is this or was this the first episode that Ella was not, you know, present at all? I mean, trust and believe it wasn't one of those situations where, man, no Curtis, no Ella. That ep the episode wasn't that good without him. No, it wasn't that at all. It was just like, wow, I don't think I've ever seen an episode without Ella and or Curtis in it. But I will say that um, I'm a bit... I'm questioning Miranda. That's my question. I'm merely, I'm, I'm just sitting here like, what were her intentions? But we'll get to all that. Let me talk about the Malik storyline first because that's going to be quick, fast, and simple. So, um, Malik is getting night duty over Melissa from Lisa, who's worn out. I think that Malik came into the kitchen, you know, oh, happy to see his uh, two favorite girls in his life doing well. And um, he mentions how... He has bruises or something. It's like, you know, I had these weird dreams. You've been really mad at me or something. And apparently she has been beating him in his sleep, which uh, I, I do find a bit concerning. But um, the thing is, he doesn't really help carry the load during the nighttime. And this is something I like to see or I like to hear in the episode is when, you know, oh, you know, I've been going to work and hitting the gym, baby, and I ain't got titties no more. I was like, remember my episode review from last week? I said, you know what? I usually don't comment on this kind of stuff, but is Malik or Doc slimming down? He looks a bit smaller. I'm like, well, is it because he's in, you know, his uh, like, you know, button up shirt and tie, basically his uh, work attire. I mean, we haven't seen him wearing that before or what, but he looks a bit, you know, just like he's slimming down. And apparently that's a fact or at least continuity wise in the show. And I was just sitting there like, yeah, I mean, Malik. I don't think it's a good look to be bragging about being well rested and whatnot, uh, given that your um, baby mama stays up all night with a crying child. And basically from there, she just ups and gives him night duty on the spot. That's something that I do find a bit strange with Lisa. I feel like this episode... There wasn't a lot of tension between him and Lisa, thank goodness. But I do feel like it's a bit stage and the fact that um go back a few episodes where she just needed a break and that's understandable but she just breaks like all right your turn take over wait what like i mean there's no prep for this so you're just gonna leave me with the baby by myself it's one of those things where there needs to be more communication and it, at the end of the episode they talk about how they're in this together and whatnot it's just that sometimes it's like malik is written to be a bit selfish but at the same time he's working and i don't know if lisa has a job i know that she doesn't do the night shift and all at the strip club anymore obviously when she was pregnant she's not stripping but she was working like the door and whatnot so i don't know if she still has that job um what about the community college thing did she ever sign up for classes and and look i'm not trying to undermine a stay-at-home mom i am not trying to do that whatsoever but um it's just that there needed to be a bit more, hey, babe, are you okay with taking over because I need a break like right now as opposed to, okay, I'm going to sleep. You know, it's just one of those things. But that gets, um, you know, covered by the end of the episode. 
But regardless, uh, let's see here. As soon as Lisa goes upstairs, the baby starts crying. So CJ actually wakes up because Malik is having a extremely hard time getting his um, child to sleep. And I'm, again, no expert, never had a baby. But I think that he had the bottle in the uh, baby, the, uh, what was it like, the baby bottle heater or whatnot. Again, I'm not an expert. And so I, obviously it was the right temperature where he took the bottle out of the thing. But um, are you supposed to just stick it in the baby's mouth immediately after it gets out of the uh, device? Like, doesn't it have to... I don't know, either cool down or something. But again, I guess when it beeps, that means the temperature is perfect. But at the same time, I'm like, yo, Malika, I don't know if you're supposed to do that. So feel free to correct me, anybody who has children or younger relatives you've helped take care of. Uh, so obviously, again, they're not going to have a real baby on the show. So, you know, you got the baby being, you know, um, in the person's arms, you know, rocking. Then you got the sound effects like a baby's crying and whatnot. Again, clever, um way of getting around that not having a baby on set i really do think that's a good way of doing it uh so cj comes in he's angry really love cj in this episode he takes over because as malik's like wow you're good at this and i'm thinking well malik uh cj has four kids i'm pretty sure he knows about you know how to properly hold the baby and rock them to make sure they drink their bottle and go to sleep but um he asked the question, so why are you doing this by yourself? I don't want to get Lisa. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, she needed a break. I'm going to take care of this, but do you know what you're doing? And basically, it's about teamwork and the fact that you need to help Lisa carry the load. And, you know, Malik recognizes that now. And from there, it's like, wow, you're a great grandpa, great granddad. And again, I love the continuity of CJ refusing to have anybody... <laughs> Having him uh, be, you know, be called grandpa, granddad, because he's too young in the face and he wants to be called poppy. I was like, yeah, my granddaughter's going to call me poppy. Okay, so then we get to the next afternoon. Lisa's well rested. It's like 1 p.m., I think Malik said. And, you know, ask how it went. Basically, Malik's like, oh, yeah, easy peasy. And then, you know, CJ's like, look, you tell one little lie, you're going to have to, uh, it's going to create a whole big, uh, big messy lie in the future. You need to tell your, um, you know, Lisa what really happened. So, you know, CJ goes upstairs to go to sleep because, well, he was up most of last night due to the baby. So from there, um, Lisa's like, oh, if it's easy peasy, I'll give you night duty from now on. Now, again, I don't really know if she meant that or she knew things were hard or she was being sarcastic. But regardless, it's just one of those things where, Malik is like, no, 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 no. I think, I think maybe Lisa knew that he was having a hard time. But regardless, um, he's like, look, I'm sorry to just, you know, throw everything at you to have you do night duty by yourself. So I'll pitch in because we're in this together, which was a great scene. It's just that I really hope that these two don't have to do the same lesson over and over and over again each week. It's like, look, Malik, just don't assume that it's a woman's work and yeah, I get it. There's some hardship involved because, you know, you go to school and you work and whatnot, but uh, you got to help you. You know, if you could tell that Lisa is a bit, you know, looking worse for wear, you know, especially like let's say it's during the day. And again, that's not to put down Malik to say he doesn't do anything. It's just that like, you know, if you see Lisa struggling a little bit like, babe, go upstairs, take a nap and whatnot. Let me watch the baby for a little while. That way, you know, uh, you could do it tonight. You know, you'll be well rested and whatnot. And I will have uh, taken, you know, some of the burden off you. So the teamwork aspect. And yeah, Lisa definitely should have um, made sure Malik knew like, hey, here's how to get the baby to stop crying and whatnot. But again, hey, it is what it is. Now to get to the portion of the episode everybody wants me to get to is like, bro, it's almost 10 minutes. I want to get to the Calvin stuff. Here we go. All right. So Laura is apparently out of town until the next day. And over the phone, her and Calvin are beefing. And Calvin's like, hey, look, look, let's do what we learn in premarital counseling. Whenever a big argument is about to come up, how about we just, you know, uh, take a break, reconvene tomorrow. Hey, I love you. I miss you. I'll talk to you so we can finish this conversation. And also something else, going back to that one episode where uh, Calvin was m messing around with that realtor, it's like the extreme lack of communication on him and Laura's part. It's like their communication lines are tied up in knots and there's always something that really causes a rift between them. And then whenever that rift comes, Calvin decides to cheat. So uh, in any case, Calvin is... Um, answering the door pookie and a new character named ronnie come in and basically pookie got out 
on parole because I think his Uncle Joe did some illegal stuff that Pookie got blamed for. But regardless, he came to fix Calvin's situation. And let me just say, Pookie's actor fell right into place. It was like literally watching an old episode of House of Pain once again. Pookie hasn't missed a beat. And again, Ronnie's new character. Um, I saw some people online going off about, oh, who's this guy replacing Peanut? Peanut will be back in future episodes. Ronnie did no harm. Thought it was a cool addition. He wasn't even in the episode too long. It was okay. So, in any case, CJ apparently called Calvin's boys to come check on him because he noticed how stressed out Calvin has been lately. Which is an interesting catalyst going back to the episode Fine Wine of last season, episode 20, I believe, where Malik and CJ and Curtis were telling Calvin not to rush to get married again and to sow his wild oats or something like that. And it's like, why would you be encouraging this when Calvin's engaged? But whatever. So, in any case, they're out to take him to the club. Uh, apparently, there was a club that Pookie promotes at, and he's going to pay for everything and show him a good time. Bottles on me. And, um... Calvin is reluctant due to the fact that every time we always hang out, I end up, you know, spending a lot of money or I end up in trouble and whatnot. And it's like, no, man, no, no, it's all good. We got you. We got you. So they make him change clothes and they head out. So then they come back home after the night's over. Apparently, Calvin was having a bit too much fun. He's drunk as a skunk. They put him on the couch, give him a bottle of aspirin, put the trash can next to his, uh, you know, the couch. That way, if he bars, then you pretty much will. It's going to be right there for him. And I love how they stuck the teddy bear under his arm and whatnot. Uh, so that was fun. That was funny. So they bounce. Now, from there, turns out Calvin fake passing out. And uh, he texts Miranda, where you at, boo? And Miranda's at the door. Um, I ain't going to lie. Okay, no, no, let me get to it. So, apparently, there's a character named Amber. She's like, you're lucky Amber uh, was able to come over to see Christian or, you know, take care of Christian while I came over here. And um, Miranda opens her jacket. I ain't gonna lie. Laura, as fine as she is, the fact that Miranda got some meat on her bones, my goodness, oh, yes. So, she come up in there looking like a whole buffet in the best way possible. She realizes Calvin is drunk as a skunk and she's about to go. But uh, before then, it's like, that's why you've been sexting me all uh, night, sending me those messages. So from there, she deletes the messages and um, off Calvin's phone. Like, look, you're going to get in so much trouble with Laura. There you go. Always looking out for me. I always look out for you, Calvin. So she tries to go and, you know, like, what was it? He grabbed like her belt or whatever from around her jacket and um, pulls her in. And it's like, look, you're not in your right mind. So, oh, that's my ear. Oh, are you sure? And then they start kissing. They get on the couch and wow. So let me, let, let me just pause the uh, review for a minute and just ask the question. At the beginning of the video, this was one thing I was a bit concerned by. Now, Calvin, you know, texting Miranda. I'm not saying sexting Miranda. It, I'm not saying it was right, but at least at the beginning of the episode, we kind of established that he and Laura were having a bit of an argument or a semi-rough patch. And as a result, you know, he probably didn't have Laura on the brain while drunk. I mean, it's like he said, you know, uh, when they're, what do you say? Um, Truth comes to the light when liquor hits your lips at night. It's just, and what, like I said in my other video from yesterday, you know, a drunk man tells no tales. It's just one of those situations where we kind of see where Calvin's mind space was at and why he texted Miranda. But at the same time, last week we established Laura and Miranda are on good terms now. Okay, so why is Miranda coming over to Calvin's? And remember, this is before she found out he was drunk. So he was sexting her throughout the night. She got Amber to come watch their child. And she came over there looking to mess around. But you know Calvin is engaged, right? So what does that say about Miranda? And then the fact that they obviously did do it. I'm... I don't know. 
But again, Miranda looking fine. But so the next morning, uh, Calvin wakes up. Oh yeah, continuity at the beginning of the episode. He tells Pookie and Ronnie, "Oh well, well I ain't supposed to have uh, the kids to watch them until tomorrow afternoon, so I can go out tonight." So it's the next morning. Um, Calvin wakes up, his head's killing him. He thinks he dreamt about being with Miranda. Wait, I smell like a perfume. For uh, perfume, but Miranda, are you here? Not in the apartment. He checks his text. He's like, no, no, no. There's nothing on my phone. Again, I like that bit because remember, Miranda deleted everything. Okay, so Pookie comes in to check on him because apparently Calvin up on the tables like Tom Cruise, you know, was on Oprah's couch, popping bottles, throwing up everywhere apparently. And as a result, he ran up a bill because despite Pookie saying that he would take care of everything, it's like, look, I got you with a bottle and that's a club I used to promote at. You got like six bottles, so he's like, you cash at me like $2,000 or whatever. Man, he kicks him out. So it's funny because Pookie just raised the fridge and, you know, uh, drinks right out of the bottle and look I don't play that like you better get a damn cup uh, But in any case when he gets kicked out he gives Pookie the juice like man It's like you change Calvin ball and chain. It's like look you change again Pookie did not miss a step I love this. I just love this so much and that's what I'm asking for Pookie and peanut whenever he shows up They don't got to be in every episode the firehouse crew the barbershop clue Clarita um, Any of the Hernandez those characters don't need to be in every episode, but when they come back, they just need to feel like they did in the original series, and I, and and it just makes the episode. So, uh, in any case, Miranda comes over, and this is uh, I guess you can see yeah, um, because this scene takes place right after Lisa woke up, and you know Malik's like, oh wow, it's almost one p.m., so this is afternoon. But in any case, uh, Miranda comes over. She's, uh, you know, she's happy. And Calvin's just, you know, wondering, hey, what are you doing here to drop off our son? He's in the car with Christian. But uh, I mean, Christian's in the car with Amber because I wanted to come up and talk to you first. OK. Um, and before they can really move forward in the conversation. Oh, yeah. I had this horrible ni nightmare last night. And Amber, it's like I just felt like her name was mentioned in it. So Miranda figures out that Calvin apparently feels that everything that happened last night was a horrible, awful, light-skinned Michael Jackson in the 90s nightmare. So she scoffs, like, looking like, what, think I'm a zombie or something like that? Okay, so as soon as Miranda leaves, you know, in a huff because she's pissed off that Calvin thought what happened last night was an awful situation, he finds the belt that he took off her jacket last night and realizes, oh, no, so... That leads into a separate video I'll do, but don't worry about it. But regardless, um, yeah, I thought this was a excellent episode. Like I said before, the two big things is, you know, Malik just not really helping with the baby. That's kind of messed up. And on top of that, Miranda coming over to fool around with an engaged man. Okay. But other than that, yeah, I thought it was a pretty solid episode. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the thumbs up button to show you liked the video. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. Hit subscribe and hit the bell icon and select all. That way you don't miss out whenever I post content on the channel.